grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Today we'll be looking at the office of the Christ, the office of the Christ, the anointed, the Messiah himself. God has a lot of operation which he does. As the Lord said in John 5, the Father walketh and I too walk. And anytime work is involved, there's an office. An office is probably, let's say, say the operational base of an operation, of a company, of a corporation, of any kind of system. Man was designed to work as the Garden of Eden was like the office of man, the first of is given to man. So God has an office where he carries out all his work. God has a government. So the government of God is run from the office of the Christ. The government of God, which is the center point, that is the, 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 the place where God runs his administration, is run from the office of the Christ. That's our topic of today. God has a government, God has an office, and both of them are being run by the enthroned Christ himself, running the government of God from his office. What a joy, what a glory. This is the ordained office to carry out all of God's work. The office of the Christ is the ordained office. That is the office that is commissioned to carry out all the works of God. What are the different works of God we have? I mean, they are innumerable. I don't know every one of them. Part of it is the creation work, which the heavens and the earth were created. There's the redemption of man. There's the building up of the church, which is going to consummate in the new Jerusalem. God has a ton of work to do. And those work are actually being done from the office of the Christ. That is where every work of God is being carried out. What a joy, what a joy. Christ is the office of God. So I would bet to look at it this way that the office is not really a place per se. When I mean place per se, I'm saying that the, uh, the, the, the focus of the office is not a place per se, but on the person of Christ. Because while Christ was here on the earth, God manifest in the flesh, the work of God was still being done. And it wasn't in the heavens physically, so to say, that he was doing the work. So anywhere Christ walk, anywhere Christ is, the work of God is actually being done. So Christ is the office of God. Everything God is doing is always through the office of the Christ. So from eternity past, the work of God did not start in creation in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 3. The work of God actually started from or Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. As someone said, I think my more of blessed memory that Genesis chapter 1 verse 0. In before the beginning, God, then in the beginning, God. So in eternity past, of course, we see that in Ephesians chapter 1. In eternity past, God started his work. We could say technically, really, there's no beginning to God. So that work from God is actually through the office of the Christ. So it's not just I know some will say that, oh, what happens in Acts chapter 2, I think verse 36, where it talks about the Lord Jesus. God has made him Lord and Christ. That Oh, is that the beginning of the office of the Christ? The office of the Christ, in my opinion, didn't begin from the resurrection of Christ because God had been working from eternity past. But of course, we see that because the humanity, humanity was added to the person of Christ. So that humanity that was added it was made lord and christ in his resurrected state the eternal purpose of god is carried out through the office of the christ what is the eternal purpose of god it is to add up all things in christ jesus to make christ the head of all things everything coming under the headship of christ christ being expressed in every end of the earth in the universe christ being glorified in every strata of human endeavor so that eternal purpose is carried out in the office of the christ what does this have to do with you and me as believers in christ jesus a ton of things which we are going to look at not the ton but a few of them like the priesthood of christ the sanctification of christ the building of the church you mention it our prayers where are they actually going they are going through the office of the christ so the eternal purpose of god is carried out through the office of the christ christ is the operational base of god so any work i dare say any work that god is doing or god will do is always through the office of the Christ. Every work that is the operational base, God is going. To, God has no office outside of Christ. God works from Christ. That's why He said that. Look, uh, see, that uh, in John chapter fourteen, that this is this. Um, I kind of, I think John chapter five. I kind of, almost, I own self do nothing. It's as I hear that I judge that the works that you see, it is not me. John fourteen. It is the Father that dwells in me that does the work. So Christ is the operational base of God. So when God wants to work in any area, in any neighborhood, in any life, in any family, it is always true the office of the Christ. But the Father who dwells in me does the works, John chapter 14. So it is the Father that 
dwells in him. God is walking. God is always walking. Christ is walking. We as well should be busy with the Father's business. As you say, don't you know I shall be I, 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 that I, I should be about my Father's business? I mean, as believers in Christ Jesus, the business, the universe is the business of God. What's the business of God? In my own opinion, is to see Christ expressed in every end of the earth. And what the job? God executes all His works from the person of Christ. All the works of God are coming through the person of Christ, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is through Christ. Whatever God is doing in any ends of the earth is always through that office. That's why I said earlier on that I, I don't think that the office is a place per se. It could have. It definitely has an office in heaven. But what I don't, the, the focus is not the physical office, but the focus is the person himself. Wherever Christ is, that is his office. For example, Christ is in our heart. That becomes an arm of his office. Christ is working in Argentina, in Japan, in Nigeria, in the United States, in London. Anywhere ends of the earth, he has an office base. And of course, you guess it right that the church, of course, the church of God, every church of the living God is a branch of the office of Christ in that neighborhood. All God's works from eternity past to eternity future is via Christ's office. Every one of them. Whether, which we go so, through some of them as well in the creation of the earth, the creation of animals, plants, man is always through this office everything from eternity past when we were chosen in union with him up to eternity future when in the new Jerusalem we shall be the abode of God what a joy, what a joy God has no office outside of Christ in my opinion, there is no other operational base of God outside of Christ because God dwells in Christ because he said that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. So he, as God dwells in Christ, every work he's going to do is through Christ, is in Christ, is for Christ, is by Christ. So every work God does is always through the person of Christ. So there is no office of God in my own opinion outside of Christ going by my knowledge of scripture. Creation was through the office of Christ because all by him were all things made visible and invisible. Everything was created through Christ, by Christ, for Christ. The goal of creation was for Christ, to express Christ, to glorify Christ. So creation was through the office of the Christ. What about our salvation? There's no other salvation, no, no other name. There is, is there salvation except in the person of Christ. So salvation is through the office of the Christ. So while he was even on the cross, he was walking <laughs> because he was the last Adam bringing an end to the old creation in the eye of God and germinating the new creation. While he was here on earth doing signs, wonders and miracles, he was still walking. So that is still the office of the Christ. So salvation is through the office of the Christ. Has he stopped his work? No, because today is regenerating uh, the spirit of as many that believe upon him as he regenerate them is also sanctifying us as the sanctifier we can see this in Ephesians chapter 5 that is cleansing and sanctifying his church is nourishing his church sanctification is through the office of the Christ so the office of the Christ in my opinion is just the person of Christ anywhere any work God is doing is through the person of Christ baptism of the Holy Spirit is through the office of the Christ is the one that baptizes with the Spirit of God which is actually himself because now the Lord is the Spirit so we see any part of God. Does someone need the mercy of God? Does someone need uh, the love of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God in any area of life, whether in their vocation, it is going to go through the office of the Christ. So when we are actually even praying, our prayers actually are, is going through the office of the Christ because it is in His name. God hears our prayer like Revelation chapter 5 as well says that our prayers come up as a sweet smell, like an incense before the throne of God. The building of the church is through the office of the Christ because He said, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. He's building His church from inside out as the living stones for the building of the new Jerusalem is building his church by feeding his church with the word of God is building his church by what it's not really a physical building he's doing physical building don't get me wrong but the one that is more important to him is actually the inward building of our inner man building us up from inside out so the building of the church is through the office of the Christ the bringing of his many brothers into glory is through the office of the Christ as the captain of our salvation is bringing us into glory 
As the captain of our salvation, he brought us out of from the kingdom of darkness, delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, and bringing us to his glory from glory to glory. So when our pastors are preaching, when our, the, when songs are being released, there's a lot of messages in the world from the throne of God being released. The body of truth that is coming from the earth is from the office of the Christ. That is how revelations is released. That is how utterance is given to his saints, to his servants, to his believers, to the different gifts, and to even you as well in the work of your hand everything is coming from that office of the christ what a joy so he has not god has not left us alone i think that's one of the things i could take out from this teaching god has not left us alone to just go figure out do something and at uh, the end of our journey here on earth we now give an account of it no he has an agenda he has a blueprint he has a book concerning every one of us and it is for us in prayer as we seek him to open the eyes for understanding to know the hope of his calling what he has in his office so that he will carry out that work through our life he operates from this office as the head of all things he has been made head of all things Ephesians 1 22 23 he has been made head of all things so that is the head of a nation the president of a nation has an office where he signs certain things into law where he makes certain he endorses certain policies anything that will happen in that nation he has to have May a say in it if it is I'm not talking about military rule, even in military rule, there's still an head there, but in a democratic setting or whether in uh in a monarch setting, the head has an office where they run things and what happens in the uh, the peace and farming, what happens in the cities, in the high places and the low places, what affects every man is actually a function of what goes on in that office. That office might not be huge, but the impact of that office affects the land. So Christ as head of all things is running it from his office as the Christ. The priesthood ministry is also from this office. We see a picture of this in Revelations 1, Revelations 2, Revelations 3, where he was dressed in his priestly regalia as the great high priest of the church, walking through the seven lamps, walking through the churches, and also diagonizing the situation and prescribing medicine, spiritual medicine himself, warning, exalting, judging them, and in love, in love, his priesthood in love, judging, correcting them, and speaking to them, because as he speaks, he's cleansing them as well, rebuking as well, and exalting. That priesthood ministry where he's taking care of his church is also wrong is an arm of the office of the christ so there are different arms i could say in the office of the christ uh, christ as judge of the living and the dead is from this office maybe i could quickly read second uh, timothy chapter 4 verse second timothy chapter 4 verse uh, verse 1 second timothy chapter 4 verse 1 he said, and let me read from the King James Version. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and in his, and his kingdom. So he's the judge. Every judge has an office, right? They have a courtroom, but they also have an office behind the courtroom. So Christ as the judge of the living and the dead runs that office from this office and it's not just the judge of the living because really we are living right now our assignment is not done there's the part of the judge of the dead which is another topic entirely but the law will teach us himself christ as the judge of the living and the dead he will by his mercy he will bring a teaching on that but the living is like he said we should judge ourselves even while we are here on earth as well there are many things and when god is saying about his judgment he's telling us to examine ourselves whether we are still in the faith to his believers to judge ourselves in terms of our work with him to judge ourselves in terms of our our love for him which was one of the things some of the churches had in revelation but let's not go deep into that the father has committed all judgment to be via the office of the christ i think john 5 22 that god the father has committed all judgment to him so christ has judged has an office and this office is known as the office of the christ so God the Father has committed all the judgment into his hand and this judgment is coming from his office. So that's why many times when we are praying, we are praying with the consciousness that we are praying unto God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God and there's this confidence that we have that whatever is approved in that office definitely there will be an answer here on earth. In that Revelation 5, as the prayers come up as incense before the throne of God, there was an earthquake on the earth. That is, there was a reaction on the surface of earth. Our prayers are not just meaningless. Our prayers have powerful effect on this earth. This is where we come in the place of intercession for our cities, for our nations, for our families. This is Christ's office as the anointed one to accomplish God's economy. What's the economy of God? is to dispense himself into his believers so that we can become his expression in every 
in every sphere of human endeavor as engineers as lawyers as uh, as politicians as a father as a mother in every walk of life the economy of god is to dispense himself so that we become god in life and nature not in his godhead so that we be his expression in the ends of the earth and that office is from the office of the christ as the anointed one sent to do that in us not remotely it comes to live inside of us and helps us to get his mission done christ rulership over the kings of the earth is from this office so revelation chapter 1 as well i think verse 4 says that he is the head of all is the ruler of the kings of the earth the ruler of the kings of the earth that is our presidents our governors our heads of state our monarch kings queens uh, ceos and organizations senior pastors every leader every one of them christ is a ruler over them but how does he rule principally i believe it doesn't I'm not, i don't think it does this arbitrarily but principally through the prayers of the saints this is why i think in my opinion where the saints are not praying you could find bad leadership in there but when the saints are alive in the place of prayer it will be very hard for the unjust to carry out their work because one way or the other the christ that is the ruler of the kings of the earth will dethrone such leaders because of the intercession so we are actually the ones empowered we are the king makers if we say that the believers the royal this part of our priest would in Christ Jesus. His headship of the church is also from this office. Are there changes you would like to see in your church to make it better, to cause more revival, rather than us looking at our pastors and thinking that okay, the choirs are not singing enough songs to cause revival, or the drama ministers, or all the technical, try to put blame here and there. Let's just turn in prayer to God, the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, because He is the head of the church as we intercede. That Lord send us word in season in every service. Lord, let there be revival in every heart in this church. Lord, we sprinkle the blood. We come against every work of darkness. It is our prayer. I think is the principal tool which God uses to send His utterance through His servant to cause revival in any church. So, because when we pray, we are praying to the head of the church to walk in His church, and He uses our prayer as a medium to purify, sanctify, and cause a revival in His church. Revival is not just something that happens abstractly. Somebody is walking. <laughs> the place of revival in the place of prayer for revival in any city in any church it's not just something that i don't think it's something that god just decided okay i will just cause revival no you might not know the person or but there are people behind the scene interceding for such so his headship over all principality and power is also from this office headship over all principalities powers dominion visible invisible whether they be thrones in heaven on earth every one of them Christ is head over all of them and is head over all of them from this office. What a joy. This is his office as the great physician. Oh, is it a need physically for a physical healing, for sickness, even if it's a spiritual healing, if it's a financial sickness, if it is an emotional sickness, is it a health sickness, is it a marital sickness, what family sickness, what sickness in the nation, sickness in the company, in our vocation, career, anything we come to the great physician. Every doctor has an office, they didn't just stand by the road. So Christ also has his office, and arm of his office is his office as the great physician. What a joy, what a joy. Christ as our advocate is also from this office. Every Anthony, an advocate is an Anthony who is advocating for the rights of his clients in the courtroom. So in the courtroom of heaven, we have Christ as our heavenly Anthony. He has an office as well. Is this someone denying us our rights? That's why in the place of prayer, we bring our petitions before the law. So everything we see, almost everything we see on earth here has a parallel in the realm of the spirit. So Christ as our advocate also has an office. Is a judge. Is also our heavenly attorney or our heavenly lawyer or advocate. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy. Also, Christ's executorship of the new covenant is from this office. Is the mediator of the new covenant, is the executor, is the testator of the new covenant. The new covenant is Christ Himself. That's just the way I say it. The new covenant God has said in Isaiah that I will give to I give you as a covenant to the people. He is the embodiment of the covenant. It was in, in, his, in his blood, the covenant was consummated. So he's executing the new covenant, which is to write the law of God in our heart, which is to bring us into the holiest of all. So many great things in the new covenant of god Christ. you can see more of this in exodus sorry <laughs> yes in exodus that's the old covenant but in uh, hebrews 7 hebrew 8 hebrew 9 hebrew 10 you see more of about christ's executorship of the new covenant so his executorship of the new covenant is from this office 
hardly will anyone be a testator to a covenant and will be the one executing it it is not because a dead man can execute his covenant it's always lawyers and the, the guys that they give to pass out the estates to the beneficiaries to be quitted to them but christ is the one that died he arose and in his resurrection he picks up the new covenant it opens the scroll in hebrews sorry revelation chapter 4 so he opens the prevail to open the scroll and to also execute the covenant christ in dwelling ministry is also via this office so christ by his spirit is also living in through also his in dwelling ministry which is to live in the believers to walk in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure that's why i said the office is not a place per se our heart is an arm of the office hello my heart is an arm of the office of christ because it's living ephesians 3 tells me that christ is making his home in our heart that christ is living in us that for us to live is christ christ is being formed in us so his indwelling ministry is also through this office also the kingdom's operations are via this office the operations of the kingdom of god is via the office of the christ that is the kingdom of god that's why i said the kingdom of god is among you anyway christ is that is actually the kingdom of god in operation the kingdom of god is in you christ and his kingdom so the king the operations of the kingdom of god on earth the will of heaven being done on earth that is in every sphere of human endeavor for god to manifest in every family that has opened the doors of that family to christ that the kingdom of god is established there in every corporation in every nation in every city where god is allowed to express and magnify himself in christ the kingdom of god has come there so the operations of the kingdom of god which the kingdom of god brings the culture of the kingdom the life of the kingdom the power the wisdom of the kingdom to begin to pervade every sphere of human endeavor so the operation of the kingdom of god is also through the office of the christ his intercessory ministry is via this office the intercessory ministry of christ where he's praying for us interceding for us night and day is also an arm of this office so we look at it that the lord is very busy and this is just very fair i don't know if it's even a one percent of the work he's doing because in his office as well is also there's a move in life and there's a growth in life the move in life in his office is to cause there to be a revival salvation of souls whereby in, in cities and nations there are crusades there are sermons they are being preached people are coming in gathering of souls into the kingdom and there's also the growth in life in part of his office growth in life is where the the new converts are now being built up in these different churches in different localities so that they will become parts and members of his body for his expression on earth all god's speakings are from this office everything the word of god is from this office every speaking of god is from the office of the christ that's why i said that the words that i speak is not his own it is the father in him the works that he does so the words of christ the words of god the speakings of god is christ the speaking of god from the heart of god is christ and that is coming from this office here so if i want to hear a revelation word if i want to hear a word from god over a situation over a matter i know that it's going to come through the office of the christ it's not going to contravene the word of god whatever god will speak to me because god always speaks from the office of the christ what a joy what a joy the administration of God's economy is via this office. The administration or administration in any organization is to the logistics and what have you. That, th that we can see the heads, the God has an household arrangement. We can see how the sun is in its place, uh, the, the grass, the animals, the humans, the boundaries of nations. It takes a lot. He's sustaining all things by the word of his power. As Hebrews 1 tells us there, upholding all things. After creating all things, it's also upholding all things. So that administration of God's economy to dispense himself into us his children is also coming from the office of the christ so the father's plan is from the office of the christ the father plan in eternity past the son accomplished the work the plan of the father which we see in the four gospels in his earthly ministry that is from the office of the christ and the spirit's application today whereby the spirit of christ himself is walking god's good pleasure in us is nourishing us cherishing us is sanctifying us feeding us with the word of god infilling us giving us the right motive the desires uh, to worship the lord to pray in intercession every one of this is going through the office of the christ what a joy for the office of the this christ. is his office as lord of all the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell in it so christ as lord of all is coming from the office of the christ christ as his lordship his lordship over everything <laughs> as lord he owns is the 
possessor, the Adonah, the one that owns the heaven and the earth, is running everything from the office of the Christ. So this is his office as Lord of all. So I think for me, it makes me bow in adoration of the Lord and it also helps me in my prayers that our prayers are not, especially our intercession, they are not meaningless. They are going through an office. You just imagine someone that's probably the president of that land is um, maybe his king folk, his family member or what have you, and they need that, they would love certain policies that would bless the citizens to be passed into it. They have a confidence that if they present the request and the idea or the policy that look, why can't we have this? Why don't we help small businesses and do this and X, Y, and Z? There's a confidence they have because they know that the president has the power to sign it into law in the jurisdiction of his office and of course they only have four years or eight maximum eight years in most nations and so we find a situation whereby christ is not having a tenor in this office his or his, his tenor is tenorless <laughs> it's eternal king over kings and christ is the office of god in summary christ is the office of god god is working today and god is working through christ in christ by Christ, for Christ, so that Christ will be glorified and exalted. Also, we said that God has no office outside of Christ. The office of God is just in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every operation, the operational base of God is Christ himself in creation, in salvation, in our sanctification, up to the new Jerusalem, everything is going through the office of the Christ. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy. So everything God is doing is always through the office of the Christ. Every work of God God is going through the office of the Christ. So today we've been able to look at the office of the Christ. We said the office of the Christ, the government of God is run from the office of the Christ. The government of God is the administration of God for the universe. And what is his goal in his economy is to dispense Christ, to glorify Christ, to see Christ expressed all over the universe. And for this to be done, of course, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Christ as an office and from this office is the anointed one to carry out the economy of God, the administration of God. It is through him God is carrying out his work. The baptism of the Holy our, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is through the office of the Christ. Creation, the building of the church, the nourishing, the cherishing of the church. Every work we want to see revival in our families, in the cities and what have you, we pray unto God and the answers come from the office of the Christ. Christ as the judge of the living and the dead is also from the office of the Christ. So all God's work are from eternity past to eternity future is from the office of the Christ. From the time where we were predestinated in eternity past, where we were chosen in union with him, up to creation and even up to the period of eternity future, whereby uh, in the New Jerusalem Revelation 21-22, it's still going to go through the office of the Christ. So what a joy to, and even the Holy Spirit today is coming to bear testimony of Christ, witnessing of Christ. So everything we are doing in the Christianity should always be with that lens that it should be to glorify Christ in all our work. What a joy. Hallelujah to the Heavenly Father. Hallelujah to God the Son. Hallelujah to God the Holy Spirit. The office of the Christ, the government of God is raw from the office of the Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.